now that I have the base uh, for my, my logo, now I want to start creating some animation. But before I do, what I want to do is prep the model just to make sure it's animation friendly, so to speak. And what you'll see is if I grab the model itself, right now it scales and rotates relative to the origin of the world, which you know, may or may not be what I want. Oftentimes with like a, a flying object, you want to actually do that at the center. It's easy enough to do. You just go to modify and you simply center your pivot. That puts it at the center. Now I can actually take the object based on its center and I can just snap that down to the world. And if you want to go into wireframe just to make sure that that is indeed the world space origin, you can do that and check. And it is. Now the other thing I might want to do is set this up relative to my camera. Now remember I said I had a camera in the scene and I actually previously had set a keyframe on it just so that I could store my kind of key position for that camera. So this is kind of the final frame of where I want to be when I'm animating. And you can see my logo is a little bit too big, so I might want to go into the channel box over here and I might want to scale this down. I can actually just scale it directly if I want or I can actually grab specific values and I can just say I want that to be exactly 50%. Now the other thing I might want to do is I have it rotated the wrong way, so I'm just going to take this and just use my J key just to rotate that around so that I have a nice kind of 90 degree angle. This is a better uh, perspective for the animation I want to create. Problem now is you can see I've got all these values, uh, offset values on these uh, channels, which isn't what I want. I want to zero this out. A simple way of doing that, you just right click and you do what's called a freeze and that will freeze all these channels so that all of those edits that I made essentially get kind of baked in in a sense so that I can always get back to zero. If I rotate, translate, scale, uh, I can always get back to where I started which is going to be handy for later. So now I've got this more or less kind of positioned for that last frame, and now I want to start to actually create the animation. So actually we'll keep the grid up a little bit longer. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out where I want this to start from. I'm going to have it flying in. I don't, if you remember the animation, the logo kind of came from the back and the side and kind of flew in from a distance. That's what I want to create. I'm going to go to frame one. I'm going to take this object and uh, I'm going to kind of push it back in space and just use my manipulator and just push it roughly uh, 10 units kind of in, in each direction. So I'm not going to get it perfect, but something like that. And now I want to go in and set a keyframe there. So I've set the keyframe for the starting point. And this is where I was saying earlier, now if I want to get back to where I started, I can just go in and I can just zero out all these values. And actually, let's go to a resting frame. Let's go to like frame 85. And now I'll go in and zero out all these values and set a key. And now I've keyed it to go back to where it originated. So now I've got a very simple motion of this kind of letter kind of moving forward. And now that's uh, too simple. I want to actually exaggerate that quite a bit. And I can do it in a number of ways. I could actually take this and I can you know push it back even farther. Um, but it gets a little bit hard to do because of the manipulator. Um, what I can do instead is I can fake this with a bit of scale. So I can actually go back to frame one and instead of moving the entire way, I can actually go in and use scale to kind of simulate the movement and then kind of amplify that with the move itself. So now I'll just reset the keyframe, I'll play this back and now I've got the logo kind of coming in from the center, kind of almost like it's pushing forward through space. I'm going to turn my grid off now. Now let's extend this a little bit. Let's add some rotation. Now again, I can manually go in and start to rotate this. I'm actually going to go in and just key in some values. I'll take the rotate X. I'm going to do something like a negative 260 or 270. And I'll take the rotate Z and I'm going to do a 360. And that, Generally when you rotate two axes like this, you get a nice kind of spinning, spiraling effect. So now I'm going to set a key there play this back and now I get this nice kind of again rotation as though it's like spinning through space. Problem that I see immediately is that it's really soft and what I mean by soft is it has this kind of almost like soft landing so it's actually slowing into that last pose and this is where you have to actually get down to the key and curve level to kind of fix that. So with the new workspace it's it's nice just to keep the graph editor just a graph editor just kind of tucked away down here so I can just click on that and I can expand it and I can access all the channels that I need that are associated with this object. We've also done a cool thing with hotkeys. So the one, two, and three hotkey give you different display modes that allow you to see your curves in, in different ways. One is absolute, where I see everything um, in its absolute value. I see two, which gives me 
view over everything in a stacked mode where I can see every curve one on top of the other. And then three is, is a really useful one. It's called normalized, and it actually allows you to, to see things like translation, rotation, and scale all in the same relative space. So you can see that when I select this keyframe, I'm actually selecting a rotation, a translation, and a scale curve. But I'm, even though one is 0 to 360 and another one is 0 to 1 or whatever it may be, I could still go in and I can edit these in this nice kind of uniform, even way. So what I'm doing is I'm actually changing the arc of this curve. So I'm creating kind of a punch in. So it's actually, instead of easing into that point, it's actually going to just kind of snap right in there. So it moves and then snaps into that spot. And then I can exaggerate this. We have weighting by default now, which didn't used to be the case. You used to have to kind of set that. Um, now you can actually go in and you can add weighting to the curve really easily just by dragging it out in, uh, in the direction you want to weight it. So I'm going to exaggerate that a little bit more to accentuate that pop, and now it should give me a little bit more of a, a really fast, like hard pop there at the end. Okay, so everything's looking pretty good. It's uh, maybe not perfect, but good enough for, uh, for now. And I might want to go in and make a few more changes. Like I might want to add um, kind of some right to left motion. So I'm going to go back to frame one, and we'll do something like this where I pull this off to the side. And this time I'm going to keyframe only the translate because I don't want to add an intermediate key over here. I'm going to keyframe, keyframe just the translate, and then I'm going to move forward. And I'll take this and maybe move him uh, somewhere over here. And I'll keyframe that. And now I'm going to get this kind of arcing, sweeping motion where, where he kind of moves left to right. And I probably need to change the tangency uh, of the curve at that point so it's a little smoother. But you get the basic idea. So I'll show you a, a more polished version of this. It's not much different, but it's a little bit different in that uh, it took a little bit more time actually working on that motion so that it looks a little more fluid and a little smoother.